Hey, hi, my name is Andy Ray. Um, I'm going to talk to you about writing hardware in a camel and running a camel hardware. I'm just running a little bit short on time, so I may have to skip some bits. Uh, so, the topics will be around uh, three projects hard camel itself, um, a risk five implementation of hard camel, and uh, hard camel zinc, which extends the risk five core to uh, implement the camel by code instruction set. <coughs> okay, so what's hard camel? Hard camel is like chisel, basically, uh, but in a camel. <laughs> <laughs> Rough idea of the basic API to work. Say too much about it. That's sort of the core, and there's a lot more that gets built on top of that. And so we'll start with the sort of hello world of functional programming design, which is a fair filter. And now it suggested to me that not everybody might know a camel, so I thought I'd break this down. And so we start with a function that builds a tap in the filter and forms a multiplication. We then place those together, feeding and the and Qs uh, to build the, the delay tabs, and it returns these M values as a list. And the last line, we build the other tree. Nice and simple. Um, one of the powers of putting a DSL in a real programming language is you can build layered DSLs on top of it. So hardcamp itself is very, very simple. It's just structural. So you don't even get things like processes in all these blocks built for state machines. So we build a DSL. So here's a very long state machine and the translation to a discarded DSL. So if you sort of squint, it looks very similar. Another one uh, is a, a DSL called Recipes. I found this in the Monad Reader, which is a Haskell paper. Um, it allows for describing imperative style programs with ocam like parse sec operations. Um, so here's a serial multiplier uh, in pseudocode. So the idea is these assignments in the part box happen in parallel. And the translation to monadic account code. You won't hear monads again. <laughs> um, looking forward, I am interested in this and um, building abstractions on top of our camel. So I've had a look at high-level synthesis, so that's C-style high-level synthesis. Done a fair bit of work around that. It's not fully working. Um, and also hard camel ga, which is blue spec, basically. I haven't done very much around that, but I really would like that because it seems like a great way of connecting interfaces together in hardware. Okay, so we can generate RTL, obviously. Um, Back-end tasks in hard camel are done through this circuit data type that's constructed by passing a list of outputs from your, from your design and it will then traverse the design, find all the nodes, and find all the inputs. You can then write Verilog or VHDL and I'm looking forward to implementing a fertile back-end as well. Yeah. Sure. Uh, the caveat, I think we discussed that yesterday, so let's give that. <laughs> <laughs> we can do simulation in hard camel, it's cycle accurate, but it's embedded in the language. Um, test benches follow this pattern, you set the input, you call the cycle function, you read outputs. Um, but there are a few other options for simulation in hard camel. So LLVM sim um, uses LLVM to JIT compile a simulator. That gets all done in uh, using uh, the camel binding to LLVM, so all in memory. Um, a key thing is the same test page gets run. You can just change one line of code to switch from internal simulations to LLVM and get 10x speed up at least. Um, again, uh, Park Camel VPI, another simulation backend. A one line change, but this time Icarus Verilog is invoked and run in the background with a, a VPI object that does uh, communication with the test bench on the sockets. Finally, not really a simulator, but uh, I don't like going up through programs so I wrote my own way forward view of the terminal. <laughs> Why not? Uh, so it's a fairly 
interactive thing. It actually works. It's missing a couple of features, but I actually debug stuff with it. Um, you can, of course, uh, use VCD files, and it can also drive GT10 away if you want. Um, so JavaScript, this is part of the camel ecosystem, is an excellent JavaScript compiler. Um, uh, genuinely, it, most of the camel can be converted to JavaScript without a problem. So you can build hard camel web apps, for example, where you can uh, create designs, put them up on the web, and users can configure and simulate and generate course. Uh, this is all done on the browser side. There's no server uh, interaction needed. And also built on this technology is either Camel JS um, and hard Camel based notebooks. And let's see if I can that. Have you ever seen the IPython notebook? Uh, so it's basically that for a Camel, although instead of having a server, uh, the compiler is built into the browser. Um, so this has. Yep, I wrote another way for all of you. <laughs> okay, functions. A car crash course. Mm. <laughs> um, I'm going to mention these because it is important to the design of our camel. So, modules uh, collect functions and types in a camel, but they can be parameterized by other modules, and this is a functor. Um, in hard camel, we can parameterize the user design, which is this. Okay, it's adding two constants, it's deliberately simple, but that could be, say, an instruction decoder. And you can abstract it over the type of combinatorial API, and then you can instantiate it different ways. So, using bits as the instantiation, this is known as a shell embedding, you actually calculate a value. So, 8 plus 2, I hope you agree, is 10. Uh, signals is uh, building a graph, it's an abstract syntax tree, it's what the back ends can analyze to do simulations and generate netlists and so on. Right. This crazy functor builds a version of the API that's implemented in Xilinx primitives. And it still uses signals, but if we generate the RTL, we'll see that it's very, very different. So it's generated looks and, and lux CYs and so on. Or see why it's been carried chain. So it's built as I would start that way. I used to call this census, but after Clifford's talk, I think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> So, why do I do this? Um, it means one implementation of code can have multiple representations. So, we can build NAND gate lists out of high level code, AIGs, gates we'll see later, and um, constant propagation is important work because clearly that was a silly example. And it shouldn't have generated an adder to add two constants. That would have got rid of it. Okay, so I'm running a camera with hardware. I've implemented, well, I'm implementing, it's nearly done, uh, a RISC V processor. It's basic, it'll probably remain fairly basic, uh, targeted at FPGA technology, uh, but it will have instruction and data caches. I'm looking to extend it with RB64. I have to do something about the M extension. C, well, after yesterday's talks, I'm not too sure, but we'll see. Um, I'm also thinking about an extended pipeline for FMAX. I want to drive FPGA FMAX as much as I can, so I'm happy to interlock a bit to extend the pipeline. Uh, but I'll probably need a brother for that. Longer term, which could easily be years down the road, quite like to do uh, proper OS support. I've got plans around sort of ways this thing could be easily configured to add different styles of instruction into the pipeline. Basically, maybe build a scoreboard based design. Okay, I've got time to do this one. So, first thing I did when I started building this thing was write an instruction decoder, and then I read in the spec that you've got a trap, and I thought, oh, well, how do I do this? So quite often with hard camel you can just enumerate brute force from the top level, check values and so on. That's not going to happen with 4 billion values, so use a SAT solver. So I'll assume you guys know what SAT solver is actually. What we need is a trusted implementation to compare against. So the RISC-V opcodes repository lists all the instructions and how they're formatted. 
and they can be passed into mask match pairs to build these equations and easily understand, uh, easily understand the equation to uh, derive trap. So it looks like that. I trust that. Now we need to get to a sat solver. So there's hard camel loop, which is sort of dual lock. Um, it converts the hard camel API to and from various hardware data types like positional cue rotation, various normal forms, BDDs, and SAT. Um, we have a linear expansion from a date netlist to CNF using the notion of date consistent functions, which I think is described in this paper. Bring them all together, we use functors, we apply the functor we need from the loop API, <laughs> uh, set up the equation, and run SAT. So, the whole thing actually checks every instruction the instruction sets, less than 40 lines of code, runs in less than a second, and when it works, all good. Okay, Park Camel Zinc. Um, this takes the basic pipeline and uh, aims to run the camel on it efficiently. Um, I'm particularly looking at byte code execution. I'll explain that in a second. I'll maybe skip over this for time. Um, so the camel compiler has two types of backend bytecode and native code. Um, there is notably a, a new but not upstreamed RISC-V native code generator for a camel. Um, but I'm targeting bytecode. So what is that? It's um, a 32-bit word, so maybe it's word code, where the seven bottom bits indicate uh, and a camel instruction, which are about 160 or so. And these are interleaved with 32 bit arguments, that's why it's actually 32 bits to keep everything aligned. Um, Zinc is the name of the abstract machine that Camel executes on. It's a stack based architecture with, you can argue, between six and eight registers in total. And it runs this kind of switch, dispatch, and loop to execute the program. So, performance, bytecode is about 10 times slower than native code rule of thumb. Um, why is that? Well, obviously there's an interpreter overhead, but I don't think that could count for it all. Uh, so I ran Val Grind, running Cash Grind with the branch simulations, and we look at the mispredict rates. So native code, 4%, 60% to byte code. So on an x86, I think you can understand why this is really, really slow. It's not going to work well on the outer order machine. With a long pipeline success. Uh, so how do we fix this? So uh, my idea is basically uh, you reformat the bytecode, shift it up to the top end, and shove in a risk by what code at the bottom, and then ex execute it through the pipeline. Um, so it gets decoded as a risk by instruction. We're using this instruction fetch and decode, and the basic implementation just causes a jump into some very local memory. Um, so I, I guess this is basically microcode implementing the camel uh, bytecodes. Um, uh, that's conceptually how, how it would work. In reality, I don't want to have to change the camel programs. Um, so I'm thinking of a branch brown style logical address spaces where you can put a camel bytecodes and then the processor will know to translate them. Um, a few other extensions are possible, so a camel has a weird 31-bit integer system, and the reason is it keeps a bit behind for the garbage collector, um, and that makes things like addition uh, take two or three cycles, whereas if we're doing hardware for it, it's trivial to get this back down to one cycle. Um, now, if we can actually add the stack, or at least the top of the stack, as part of the architectural state of the processor, um, we can now have this add.zip instruction, which doesn't have any operands, implicitly reads the stack, and reads and writes these accumulator registers, which are probably just risk five registers. Um, but now, there's no need for the processor to jump. The decoder can just turn that bytecode instruction into this instruction, and go straight through the pipeline. Um, there are lots of other similar sort of stack accessing ops that are like that, that I think make up the majority of the executed bytecodes. Um, it's just I'm not yet sure how to pipeline this notion of a stack 
than the five or seven stages or whatever. But I would like to do that. If I can get it to work, that's very exciting. Um, so, uh, why not native code? Well, some advantages of byte code. Um, it's got easy, an easy dynamic loading system. Um, it allows programs to have the entire compiler compiled into it, which uh, could, could open up some interesting, possibly strange applications. One example of that is definitely the top level. So I have this dream of booting up my FPGA and getting a kernel prompt to be able to type in and compile code and load files and stuff all on the FPGA. Uh, but the real reason is it's just the simple part of the compiler to start with. Um, eventually, I will look at native code. Uh, some of these instruction set extensions will uh, definitely work there. Um, I do wonder if you analyze the back end of the account compiler if there's a fast FPGA architecture living in there that hasn't been found yet. So I'm going to go searching. Okay, so all this code is uh, BSD. Um, it gets released through OPAM, which is the Camel package manager. Um, so our Camel Recipe and our Camel Zinc aren't ready yet, but once they become available in OPAM, that's when they'll uh, be ready. Um, and we're also looking at uh, building uh, systems with FuseSoc, so that will mean generating some RTL and using it within the repository for that. Okay, thank you very much for listening. I have a question. How did you get started using it for hardware design? Um, well, there is some history here actually. It's about 2005, I think it was. Um, a chap called Tom Hawkins uh, released. Well, he used to work on a lab called Confluence. I don't know if anyone remembers that. But, uh, well, he ended up releasing, after he'd done that, uh, a lab called HD Camel, which this is directly derived from. Um, so I got involved with HD Camel back then, supported it for a while, did an F-sharp version called HD F-sharp, and then came back to a camel with, this is basically the third version of the library we designed a few times. So you did work on that? Yeah. Questions? Yeah, that's it. Does anyone, does anyone else, when you, yourself, use the and to design like stuff, interesting stuff. Um, I've had some interest from guys down Cambridge, but I've not seen anything. And I can tell you on the OPAM package manager this month, hard can was downloaded seven times, so someone's in school. Someone's in school. Maybe an accident. <laughs>